Could this be the Raspberry Pi killer? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So back in early 2021, I built what I call the Ultimate Shack Pi. And I've been running that Raspberry Pi ever since. That included a 8 gigabyte version of the Pi 4, and I believe we put a 256 gigabyte hard drive in that. However, it's now 2023, and things have changed. Now, I do still run Raspberry Pis for single-use applications. In other words, I use it for things like my APRS Digipeter here at the house. I use a Pi Zero for my Winlink gateway, and I use another Pi Zero for my portable Digipeter, amongst a few others. But I've just got some different requirements now than I had in 2021. And I started searching for a computer that could meet those requirements. Now, what requirements did I really have? Well, first and foremost, I wanted this thing to be able to run natively on 12 volts. No adapters, no converters, just plug 12 volts into it and it run. The other thing is I still wanted that small form factor, very similar, if not as small, as the Raspberry Pi. I did want it to have expandable memory and the ability to upgrade the hard drive. Having an SD slot on board would also be a plus. Another thing that I really wanted it to have, although this wouldn't have been a deal breaker, is I wanted it to have at least one USB-C USB-C port and three USB-A ports. It had to be relatively the same cost as the Raspberry Pi and it needed to be relatively uh, the same as far as power consumption goes. And that's where I found the WoWi computer. This little computer is running an AMD Excavator A9-9400 processor at 3.2 gigahertz. It comes with 4 gigs of RAM and a 128 gig SSD hard drive. Now we will be taking a look at how we can upgrade that in the future. On the front, you'll find a power switch, a headphone port, a USB-C port, and two USB 3.0 ports. Now if we flip that thing around, you will find a DC barrel connector and that takes a 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter connector so uh, if you're not familiar that's exactly the same size that the icom 705 requires so that's an easy barrel connector to get our hands on in addition to that we've got two hdmi ports and two usb 2.0 ports along with a spot to plug in a network cable now, like I said, I do plan on doing some upgrades to this. It comes with that 8 gigs of RAM, but I want to expand that to 32 gigs of RAM. In addition, I'm going to be swapping out the native hard drive for a 1 terabyte hard drive. So once I do that, how does this cost compare to something like that Ultimate Pi that I built on the Raspberry Pi 4 platform? Well. When I bought that, and that was before everything went crazy and you couldn't find Raspberry Pis, I bought the Pi 4 8 gig model, and it was a little accessory kit that came with it, so I did get an SD card, I got a power adapter, uh, and I think some heat sinks with it. And that cost me 90 bucks. In addition to that, I picked up a 256 gig SSD card for that particular build and had 37 bucks invested. The last component that I bought for that build was the case for it, and that set me back $47. Now, these prices don't account for taxes or shipping that might have applied. These are just the base cost. So the total that I invested in that Raspberry Pi was $174. Now, let's compare that to the WoWi computer that I just picked up. The computer itself was $98. I'm going to expand uh, the RAM to 32 gigs. That RAM cost me 48 bucks. And then I want to uh, up the hard drive. We're going to be putting a one terabyte solid state drive into it. 
So the total cost there was $39 for the uh, SSD. The total cost for the entire build is going to be $185. So basically about $11 more than I spent two years ago, but I'm going to have quite a bit more capable system readily available when I'm ready to work on it. I'll have four times uh, the amount of RAM that I had in that Ultimate Pi build, and I'll have four times the hard drive space. Now, hard drive space may not really be that big of a deal. Honestly, on that 256 gig drive that I built, or that I used with the uh, Ultimate Pi build, I've probably consumed only about 25% of it. The only reason I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, one terabyte drive is simply for the cost of it. Uh, I'm getting basically the uh, four times bigger SSD drive for the exact same cost that I paid for a 256 uh, gigabyte drive two years ago. Being able to power this thing natively with 12 volts is a huge advantage. I can't tell you how many times I've run into RFI issues trying to use some adapter to power the Raspberry Pi from 12 volts instead of using its native USB voltage. Something else that I'm coming to find is there's just a lot more support for uh, distros like Linux Mint and Linux Ubuntu compared to the Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi's got a huge following and a huge community that we can look to for support when we do run into issues. But there's a lot of things. Let's take, for instance, Vara, uh, getting it to run in the Linux platform. Getting Wine and Box86 to run on a Raspberry Pi 4 is exponentially harder than it is to get Wine running on a regular x86 machine because we don't have to worry about trying to take x86 code and run it on a ARM processor. However, we may find in the future as ARM processors are used in more and more computers that may not be quite as big of a deal. But as it stands as of July of 2023, well, that still is an issue. Now, there are a few trade-offs moving to the WoWi computer. They really shouldn't affect me because I'm looking to primarily use this as my shack computer. The first is the form factor. It is slightly larger than that Ultimate Pi that I built two years ago. And the second shortcoming I've really noticed is higher power consumption. This thing is pulling somewhere around 400 to 450 milliamps where the Raspberry Pi 4 build was only pulling about 350 milliamps. So not a huge difference, but definitely a difference that should be noted. Now, in the next video, we'll go ahead and crack the case on this thing. I'll show you guys what it takes to upgrade the memory and the hard drive. And then we'll look at installing Linux Mint. And we'll take a look at loading all of the applications we need using 7.3 Linux. But I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think this could be a Raspberry Pi killer, especially considering the fact that we can't readily get our hands on those Raspberry Pis quite yet? It would be awesome if you guys sounded off in the comments below. I hope you found today's information useful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.